What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm posing the question, should you buy Toon Chaos? There's a lot of hype surrounding this set for several reasons, and this is like, relatively speaking, the first set we're getting on time since coronavirus and quarantine and all that nonsense. So it's nice to return to normal to a degree. Shops are starting to slowly open up and hopefully we go in that forward trajectory. But nonetheless, I wanna bring you guys my full breakdown and analysis for the set and whether or not you might wanna purchase the set overall. If you do, be sure to use my TCG player affiliate link down in the description below. Directly supports the channel, doesn't cost you anything, and I appreciate your guys' support. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, I want to start off this video by addressing the elephant in the room, and that is obviously coronavirus. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because since we are still technically in a recovery period, let's call it, there have been some issues when it comes to this set. A lot of stores that ordered Toon Chaos were not getting their full allotment that they ordered from the distributors and we're getting a significantly less amount, which means that Toon Chaos is actually relatively hard to find. What does that mean for you? Well, because the demand for this set is so high, but supply is so low, that means the prices for the cards in this set on average are going to be inflated as a result of this just because people are looking to get these cards. And since the supply isn't really there for them to kind of meet that demand, you're gonna be paying higher than average prices so do keep that in mind if you plan on paying for anything, whether it's single cards or sealed product entirely. Now, Toon Chaos isn't your typical main core set that we get four of every year. It's a side set that contains both new cards as well as reprints. And keep in mind throughout the duration of this video, my three pillars that I consider when it comes to rating products overall. And those three pillars are if the product appeals to the casual market, the competitive market, and the collector market. These markets are all audiences that I feel should be considered when creating any product and usually what I look to when it comes to evaluation. Now for those of you who don't know the contents of this set, there aren't secret rares in this set. We have uh, rares, super rares, and ultra rares. Ultra rare being the highest non-special rarity, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Ultra rares are kind of what are carrying the biggest bulk of the set when it comes to overall value. Now in each booster box of Toon Chaos, on average, you should receive about three ultra rares per box. Now, if you look at the total average prices of what the ultra rare cards are going for, at the time of recording this video, the average ultra rare price is about $23 a piece. So, on average, if you get three ultra rares at $23 a piece, that means you should be getting about $69 worth of value <laughs> for your booster box. Now, if you buy the box for about $65, then you're gonna break even more often than not. However, Keep in mind that these are the prices at the time of recording this video. This is before the set has really had a time to be cracked open by a lot of people. These prices are sometimes pre-sale prices, which vendors use to kind of gauge the interest and the hype when it comes to certain cards. And since there isn't really a lot of supply in the market as of right now, these prices have not had a chance to reach equilibrium. And there's a very high likelihood, as with all sets, that the prices of these cards are going to dip. So while for the time being, you may be able to break even on every box of this that you open, you know, that may not be the case for very long. Also keep in mind too, that just because that's the average doesn't mean that's going to be what you pull. You might pull the three worst ultra rares in the set, you know, if you have my sort of luck that is, and then your box may only have about $27 worth of value to it because every other card in the set, apart from I think one super rare is worth less than a dollar. So ultimately you're not really going to be making your money back if that's what you're looking for when it comes to overall value. Now, I want to start by talking about some of the individual cards within the set. First up is the Toon cards. Again, this is one of the biggest pulls when it comes to the set. This is what people were most hyped and looking forward to, and I think this appeals to two audiences. This appeals to the casual market and the collector market. The casuals love this because this is something that, again, got a lot of people interested in Yu-Gi-Oh! to begin with, and the fact that you tell people who used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in the past that there's new Toon monsters, that's all they need to hear to see their eyes light up. And the collectors love it for the same reason, because again, nostalgia plays a big part into this. And that's one of the reasons why people were so hyped when this set was first released. Now, when it comes to tunes, you have to keep in mind that these aren't gonna be the most competitive cards. I will say these are pretty strong cards for what they're worth if you were just rating them in a vacuum, but 
Again, tunes are an outdated archetype. They have a lot of inherent flaws that kind of hold them back from being viable. And so at best, it's going to be a casual oriented deck. Nonetheless, one thing to note when it comes to the tune cards is that they're going to maintain a relatively high price point in the future because this is probably going to be the only printing for these cards for the next several years. And because of that nostalgia and because of that collectability, people are going to eat these up and hold on to them knowing that they're going to go up in value. Now that brings us to the Chaos cards, and the Chaos cards, again, being the second half of Toon Chaos, was what a lot of people were hyped about. This is kind of where you shift from the more casual oriented to the competitive side, because Chaos decks have had their time time and time again when it comes to the competitive spotlight. And when it comes to the Chaos cards in the set specifically, they have a lot of potential. While there may not be a specific place at this current point in time for these Chaos cards to be housed, there is going to be a point Point where people figure out a strategy that's going to abuse cards like Chaos Space, like the uh, Chaos Creator, Chaos Valkyria, you know, the list goes on. The cards are good enough that they can be justified either being splashed in a multitude of strategies as text or finding a way to just abuse them as much as possible in their own strategy. Someone will find a way to abuse these cards at some point. And while the hype for these cards may be high right now, I definitely expect these to dwindle down a little bit. But again, keep in mind, I don't expect these cards to be reprinted for several years. So you can expect that if someone does find a way to abuse something like Chaos Creator or Chaos Space, then there is going to be a moment where those cards just exponentially jump in price. We also have the new Infernoble Knight cards. These are cards like Immortal Phoenix Gearfried, Infernoble Knight Renault. There's also the other one that was a jump promo in Japan, which isn't played as much, but it's still part of the archetype. These are going to become more relevant in the future once once Rise of the Duelist releases in August. And I think these are some of the cards that have some of the highest potential in terms of cost to become much more expensive because when you look at these decks in the OCG, this deck is a tier one contender. Now that doesn't necessarily translate here to the TCG, but a lot of the times decks that are really good in the OCG are also really good here for us as well. So it's just something to keep an eye on. And with these decks playing multiple copies of Renault, playing um, at least one copy of the Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed, people are going to need these cards and there's not going to be any other way for people to get them. So if anything, these might be an interesting investment if you're looking towards the future, especially if competitive play starts to pick back up again. We'll have to see that is a bit of a gamble, but in terms of like overall investment value, all of like the main core cards that people are chasing actually have some long-term viability, whether it's the tune cards for their nostalgia, the chaos cards for their you know powerful potential plus nostalgia, and the Inferno Noble Knight cards for their competitive viability. And don't forget, there's also some reprints in this set as well, some of them actually being very desirable. First up being Pot of Extravagance. This is the big one that a lot of people were looking to when we first got the press release for this set. Pot of Extravagance was hitting like $80 to $90 a copy because it has yet to see a reprint. This is the first official reprint of the card and probably the most expensive ultra rare you can pull. So if you do get one, you're gonna be sitting pretty. And I don't expect this card to go down very often. You know, when Infinite and Permanence first received its reprint, Print, I believe in a uh, dual power. I don't remember which set it was exactly, but infinite impermanence went from being like a $90 card to like a $40 card for the reprint. But that's still a lot of value, and I expect Pot of Extravagance to follow a similar trajectory because Extravagance is used in a lot of top decks. There's also Cyframe Gear Gamma. This isn't like the most expensive card, like maybe 10 bucks at most, but at times, if people do start to play it more and more in the meta, it does tick upward. So I think this is a nice reprint overall just to get more gammas into circulation. There's also some like weird one-off cards like Masked Hero Acid and like Micro Coder, which have never actually had a reprint. And so these cards were were like expensive for no reason because one it hasn't had a reprint in like 10 plus years and the other one was a video game promo so that's going to make these cards much more accessible and you'll be able to get them for like one to two bucks at most but this brings us to the biggest and most interesting aspect of toon chaos and that is the collector rares so for people who don't know collector rares are a brand new rarity currently only exclusive to toon chaos in terms of frequency you can expect to see a collector's rare card about one in 
every three to four boxes. So if you buy a case of 12 boxes, you should expect to see anywhere from three to four collector rares in here. And what I like about this is that it gives long-term sustainability to the sealed product because these collector rares are essentially high rarity versions of cards that people really, really want. Talk about like the Toon collector rares. Those are gonna go for absurd amounts of money, but each collector rare at the time of recording this video is at least $100, some going up to $250 with current pricing. Now, again, we don't have a lot of supply into the market yet, so we don't know where these are gonna settle. I would expect those prices to go down to buy about 20%-ish, but in the future, since these cards aren't gonna be reprinted as collector rare ever again, and if they do, it won't be for several years, these cards are going to maintain a very high price point. This appeals to multiple audiences yet again. It appeals to the collectors specifically who really want to get their hands on these, competitive players who like maxing out their decks, who may already have some of these cards like Extravagance or Desires, and also the casual market who just wants to get some really cool shiny cardboard in their sets of Toon Chaos. But of course, every set has its weaknesses, and I think the first weakness of Toon Chaos is the reprint quality overall. Now, I don't want to take away from the fact that we have Extravagance in here, like that's really good. Also, Cyframe Gear Gamma is a nice one as well, but when you look at everything else, you kind of wonder what they were thinking because some of the cards in here are rather questionable in terms of like playability from either the casual or competitive end of the spectrum. You have to think too, the set is called Tune Chaos, and when only like 10% of the set is actually made up of Tune cards, they should have just gone all out. Now you could make the argument that, yeah, some of those other Tune cards are irrelevant, but when you're appealing to that audience already, why wouldn't you just take some of those older Tune cards, put them in here, either update their text, put them in a nicer rarity for people to collect. Again, that is one of the leading selling points of this set for a lot of people. And so I feel like they kind of dropped the ball on that in that regard. Same thing goes for the Chaos half. Yeah, there's Chaos cards, but in terms of like the reprint that they picked in here to kind of complement that, I feel like they could have picked better, more relevant Chaos cards than they did, and I think that's just a missed opportunity. And I think one of my biggest gripes with this set is the fact that they took a structure deck that the OCG had, dismantled it, and put the cards that were exclusive to the OCG at the time and place them in this product. That's just so frustrating. Like they should have just given us the structure deck to begin with because now you have cards like Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed that are gonna be like 20 to $30 when they should be at most like five, right? That's just something that they were kind of looking to put these cards in when they could have just poured it over the structure deck like they do with like every other structure deck. And that just, you know, it kind of just irks me that they do this because it artificially inflates the prices of these cards when there's no reason for them to be so. When you look at the Infernoble Knight cards, I believe both Renault as well as the other one were jump promos. So that's even more questionable because here in the TCG, we don't have jump promos anymore. So we had to get these cards somehow and they did have to give them to us at some point. You know, I was thinking it was gonna be like Battles of Legend because that's typically where they give us a lot of the OCG cards, but it makes more sense if you're going to give us Immortal Phoenix Gear Free to give us these as well, because that leads right into Rise of the Duelist and gives us the opportunity to get the cards prior. Again, it's you know, it is what it is, but it's just frustrating that the TCG and OCG are so split like this that we don't get card releases in a similar fashion. So what are my overall thoughts when it comes to Toon Chaos? Well, remember at the start of the video, I talked about my three pillars, the casual, the competitive, and the collector audience for who a set should appeal to. And candidly, I think this hits the mark on all three. When it comes to the casual players, there's cards like the Toon cards that they're gonna be chasing after for nostalgia or for, you know, cards that got them into the game in the first place that also subsequently appeals to the collector market, but then you have the collector rares as well, which is nice because that's just more fodder for them to chase after and gives the product some long-term sustainability in terms of maintaining its price point. And then for the competitive market, you've got the cards like the Infernoble Knights, which we're gonna be getting more support for later on. You've got new Chaos cards as well for people to play around with. I know people are already experimenting with like Dragon Link and Chaos Space and different things like that. And so when it comes to the product, it really just hits all three pillars and 
and that's what I like to see in a product. So from that perspective, I really can't say too much about this product in a negative way because it really appeals to all audiences. Whether you're a casual player looking to get back into the game or start getting into the game, a competitive player looking to get the next best cards or looking to max rarity your deck, or a collector that likes to get cards both for nostalgia and for their value, there's something for everyone in this set. And that doesn't happen too often. Longtime fans of the channel know that I am nothing but critical when it comes to sets like this, but I think they actually did a relatively good job. It's not perfect. I don't think any set is, but overall, I think the set is actually very well designed. It could have been improved, but I think for what it's worth, it's a decent set all around. Now, obviously, I'm going to recommend that you guys buy the single cards because it's always the most cost efficient way to spend your money because then you're getting the cards you do want instead of gambling and hoping that you get the cards that you want. But nonetheless, it's still a decent set all around. Definitely one of the better ones we've had in, I would say, a pretty decent amount of time and overall I think it's something that a lot of people are looking forward to and just remember that if you do decide to buy any singles or sealed product of Toon Chaos use my TCG player affiliate link down in the description below to help support the channel guys thank you so much for watching the video let me know down in the comments what you guys think I'd really like to hear your thoughts thank you guys so much for watching the video be sure to like the video as always subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content and if you found this video informative consider supporting me on patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.